So here we have an induced EMF problem. Um, EMF, of course, stands for electromotive force, which basically you want to think of that as a voltage. Um, so you have a voltage that's induced by the magnetic field. The equation for that is the EMF is equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic flux. That's what this essentially represents. And the magnetic flux is equal to B times A when the vector, the area vector, the B field are parallel. That is true in this case because we have, um, notice it mentions that the rectangular conductor is positioned perpendicular to the field, meaning that if I draw the conductor as this rectangle here, the B field is coming out of the page. The area vector is also coming out of the page because the area vector is perpendicular to the loop. So you have B and A in parallel, meaning that the EMF should just be the negative time derivative of B times A. Now, what this means can vary. It usually means that there is um, some time, so either B or A is changing. If A is changing, then you would have B times DADT. If B is changing, then you have DBDD times A. In this particular case, it would be DBDT times A because as you can see, the B field is what's changing, the area is not. So if we go ahead and plug in values here, dBdt is the rate of change of B. If we know that it has decreased by, uh, let's see, it would be dBdt is equal to the change in B divided by the change in T, assuming it's happening at a constant rate which is negative 1.8 divided by 10, which would be negative 0 0.18. And that would be in torads per second. The area is just two by four, so eight meters squared. So you end up with negative times negative 0 0.18 t per second times 8 meters squared. And it turns out that the units of that is voltage, volts. And you'll see that it'll be positive because we have the negative canceling. It's negative, once again, because you're reducing the B field. The B field is decreasing. Um, so with these problems, you're always going to, usually this is going to be perpendicular. If not, you have to use a, um, you have to use a cosine function. So you could do B times A times cosine. In this case, they're perpendicular, though, so we don't have to worry about that. We just do B times A, take the time derivative of whichever one is changing, and the time derivative will usually be constant. If not, you'll have a function you can actually take the derivative of. But in this case, we're assuming that the change, the rate of change here is constant. So we get a relatively simple expression there, and you can calculate that out and solve that. So 